Oh, no, it's already recording. That's, that's embarrassing. <laughs> okay. All right, let me read the uh, statement uh, okay. and then I'll turn it over to you, Susan. So okay. pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, chapter 30, section 18 in the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people who may gather in one place. This meeting of the Hubbardson Finance Committee will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town website. No in-person attendance and members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made sure the public can access this proceedings in real time via Zoom. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website a comprehensive record of the proceedings. Wonderful. Thank you. Call the meeting to order 735. Everyone is here. Item number one is the minutes. I have no minutes. So item number two is the budget. All right. Uh, you want me to start with the school stuff? Please. Okay. So uh, last night the school committee met and um, discussed the, the budget scenario. So they presented a they presented a picture of the budget, so I'm going to get into what they did and then and the risks of what they did and what that means. So um, they, first of all, made a recommendation and no vote. So it's been no change to our assessment at all. So in summary, what they did with the budget is they are expecting to realize about a million dollars in savings in the FY20 budget. So this year's budget. So that comes from transportation contracts. Um, any, any furloughed employees, any expenses not incurred, you know, similar to, we, we have a similar list of, of items as well. So um, it's kind of a legal shell game, but what they're planning on doing is taking that million dollars and, and putting it into the FY21 assessment is what was recommended not done in order to, uh, and the way they're doing that is using a revolving fund to offset some costs that'll come in FY21, which is legal embedded and, and, and an okay way to do this. Um, that will reduce our assessments significantly. Um, and I can show you what that would look like. The one caveat to this is whenever you use one-time revenues, as we know, it creates a hole in the budget. So they're funding this budget with, with one-time revenues. We talk all the time about how that's not a good idea, except during extreme circumstances or when you have no other option. Um, so this is a way to bridge this year but it will have repercussions in the future. And as, as one wise person told me, you, you can only fight one crisis at a time. So it might be, um, it might be one of these situations where you worry about 22 and 22. That person was a genius. Genius, yes. <laughs> Last name rhymes with, with pain. Right, yeah, Rusin, Rusin Sane said that, I think. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the assessment. So, if you took a million dollars, so what you're looking at here is, I'm just gonna walk you through each line and what it means. It's definitely a good exercise for a finance committee. So the FY21 budget, this was the 20 appropriation. They're gonna <clears throat> drop what they said they were gonna budget by a million dollars. And that brings it down to this $34,993,542. Again, this hasn't been done, it's just been recommended. This is about a half percent increase from last year, uh, taking that taking that million right off the top. So the rest of these numbers are capital projects, debt. This this number is in yellow was confirmed today for me. And then these revenue numbers come right from their budget sheets. So this is what the governor has said is going to go to the, to the schools. We still haven't done the legislature side and I can talk more about that. This district revenue number is, um, is the use of E&D as they do many years and then other one-time revenues to offset costs. So some of these are like revolving fund transfers and, uh, and, and the other things that, that they normally do to offset their budgets a little bit. Uh, and it includes about 400,000 in E&D. So that you come down to sections K through P. Okay. And this is the, this is where, two things come into play the required local contribution and the apportionment so you can think of these two things as the state says you need to pay this and 
the apportionment is how much of the school is Hubbardston. So right now, very interestingly, the schools are one quarter Hubbardston students. So we're paying one quarter of, of any costs. And this is what the state says you got to pay no matter what. So that equals out to this operating assessment. Okay, and that carries down to, to this section here where it shows everybody's assessment. So with this, with this move, the E&D and all that, the school assessments would look uh, very small this year. It would be a, you know, in, in any other type of situation, something we would, we would go to them and say, if it looked like this, we'd have no issues. Well, that's basically what they did with this one-time revenue source. So our assessment increase would be 2.39. So I just want to talk about these numbers before I turn it over to, to, to hear comments and, and whatnot. But this chapter 70 and 71 and this charter school, so this state aid is very much in the is very much in the air right now. So what does that mean? The just like our state aid, which you'll hear me talk about in, in our budget presentation, the school state aid could stay the same. It's definitely not going up and it could go way, way down. And also on the expense side, the schools are right now discussing what school is going to look like next year. It could, and I think I've talked to you about some of this, but it could be a situation where buses are half full, classrooms are half full, some combination of remote learning and in-person learning, massive sanitation costs, and all of this will be mandated by the state in, in a worst case scenario. And does the state pay for that? You know, that's still up in the air. So what Cheryl said last night was, Basically, they're using these one-time revenues to bridge this gap year, but if if state revenue doesn't come in, then it's another budget conversation about where do you make up that, and it could be massive amounts, like multiple percentage points on our assessment uh, if revenue doesn't come in where it's supposed to. And I've been on some of those calls and share some of their concerns about these revenue numbers holding. So uh, it's a perfect stopping point if anybody wants to talk about any of that. What the the amount that uh, that they were talking at the school committee meeting last night um, about the percentage that um, that those numbers can drop? I remember hearing uh, as much as fourteen percent. Ryan, was that right? That that MMA or someone thinks that that that's that's the magnitude that they might be looking at. Yeah, that that number has been said. So that's, that'd be a big whack. That's right. That's Huge. Right. Yep. Crippling. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one quick question was, so based on that, the, the, um, that PDF file you had sent where it, where the new assessments, if it was at 3%, 4%, 5%, et cetera, at, at the 3%, it gives us a deficit of $32,000. So based on that calculation, which was like two point four percent give or take does that actually have us as like a with without a deficit then based on assuming we go with that number because it didn't go down the new assessment sort of thing didn't actually get down to two percent so i was just curious where that would put us so i can move to that i just wanted to stop with the i can go through where our budget's at right now because it changes mm -hmm. every day but i just want to make sure there wasn't any questions on the school side Schools, school finance is extremely difficult to understand. Right. I think the only thing that I would do is take those numbers and play with a 14% cut and see what it looked like. Okay. And I can do that exercise. Yeah, um, just for that. And then the other question I had is all of those, all of those assessments for the towns look pretty, look pretty reasonable, except Hardwick is still in a, in a bad way regardless, right? So that's, you know, I haven't, I'm just calling it back up so we can talk about the same number. I haven't seen their finances. I don't know, but from my understanding, a level funded budget from the schools still caused a problem for them. Um, right. You know, but that's hard to, you, you can't, you can't gut the school system, you know, completely. Well, the question, the, the, where I'm headed with this is, um, I remember, Last year, being all alone by the telephone when it was uh, when when we were getting hurt, 
Uh, are we gonna are we gonna return the favor to Hardwick this year? And that's that's a conversation for for our elected officials. Okay. My next question um, is, when would the school have these updated numbers from the state? Meaning, if we went <clears throat> based on this current number, and I know we've talked about it, there's been a lot of talk of sort of having another town meeting in the fall. Would you know if we went with this number now, and then you know would would by the fall we have the new number? Like, I guess when when would the state aid be sort of finalized? So if, if I knew that answer, <laughs> um, but I'm not going to play that game with you. So what I believe is we won't have that number until July or August. So the schools have been conditioned by the, um, by DESE, their, their oversight board, that they're going to a 112th budget. The regional schools that don't have a budget yet, the 20 something that don't have a budget, which we are one of, because they don't know they don't know what they have. And the ones that have passed the budget are gonna probably change them in the fall too. So it's not mm -hmm. like they're they're in a better spot. So it's gonna be my recommendation to you and the Board of Selectmen that we pass something if we have a town meeting in June, knowing that we should prepare for that to change and could change very drastically to, to sort of a, a more real budget discussion in the fall. Um, there's also a chance that we don't have town meeting and we're on a 112th budget too, so. So August, if I, if I had to bet. Ryan, did you say they did not vote on this? They did not. So these numbers, I mean, they're just a guide right now. They are. It's the best information we have. Yep. And, and they mentioned not voting until they had to for town meeting, which means I don't expect them to vote on it this month. So we could be reacting to this, but it's not finalized. And of course, I know <clears throat> what the state does is going to have a huge effect on everything. But it just makes it hard to come up with final decisions or final recommendations when everything is still up in the air. It definitely does. Um, I would stay as conservative as you can, yep. which is what the schools also say, right? So everyone's playing this game. I would say as conservative as you can, because, you know, you've got to weather, and I get, again, I can go through our budget and what my suggestions would be. Um, you got to weather what, what is right now is an extreme unknown. So we had a call with um, Sean Cronin. He's the deputy commissioner of, of DLS, used to, used to work in, in our field, all the small town administrators. And, you know, he gave us some pretty bleak information too about, um, state aid looking a lot like it did in 2008 for the next couple of years and um, little to no relief from the state government unless the federal government steps in and that's two levels of government so that's going to take a long time okay all right so we were um so now we were going to look at the um, the spreadsheet, Ryan, that you had prepared showing the the incremental budget cuts and so forth. Yes. So Just first, I want to assessment. show you the COVID nineteen budget version eight is what I'm showing <laughs> you right now. So this is a summary sheet, and it has that new new assessment number in it, right? Which we know is a, a placeholder at best. So it also, I just want to highlight, I was not cutting state aid until that call with uh, DLS. Um, they are pretty plugged into what the governor's thinking. So in the state, what the state legislature's thinking. So this two six sixteen number that I now have in state aid is what we got last year. So that would be a level funding, which is a fairly conservative number, not super conservative but it does create a larger deficit of, of about 275,000, not 260. So I just wanted to say that up front. Also down here in this part of the summary sheet, if you'll see the select board uh, recommended to eventually town meeting 
and to your this board that we don't do any capital unless it's absolutely necessary. My recommendation there would be about 30,000 in capital then at this early town meeting, which means our net available free cash is, is much higher, but we do know that we need that capital. So, you know, that's not just something that's available. Um, it is just a something to hold in reserve, as I said, to try and weather some of these unknowns. So that, that that's an interesting number to know. So, so let me, I'm sorry, Ryan, let me, let me interrupt. So, so the capital budget, what was it originally? And now it's dropping down to 30. It was 236,000. And the idea there was to push off those expenditures until next year or to keep this right, right now to a fall town meeting. Okay, just push it out to the fall. So if, if everything stayed the way we thought it would stay, then you would spend that money. But we should know by that time what our aid numbers on the school look like, what our aid numbers for this, the town look like, and even maybe a little bit more about FY22. So if you had to not do any capital because you know there's a real big storm coming, it's sort of a smart practice. This bolsters right. our stabilization. Okay. Um, it does keep the master plan chapter and the town center design. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's because if, if we don't do the town center, we, we, we might lose out on having it done in 2022. And I think that yeah. is bad. And the master plan is just a momentum thing. It's small money to get that done. So um, okay. all of this is up for obviously your, your approval, but these are my recommendations. So okay. then we'll go to the sheet. Every time I switch Brittany's picture here is disconcerting. Yep. <laughs> Definitely a pre COVID world. Okay, so I'll try and make this a little bigger. So again, working from, from left to right on this. Um, see my original deficit number mm -hmm. is, is, is about 275 if you take that state aid conservatism. Okay? And I'm, I'm throwing very conservative revenue numbers at you and hoping that I'm being very conservative. There are some who are going to say that I'm being too conservative and there's some that are saying I'm being not conservative enough. So that's again a tolerance for your risk. Um, so with those conservative revenue numbers projecting a deficit of 275. So Josh is right at 3%. We only had a $32,000 um, yeah. gap. And if you take another, it's 50,000 for every 1%. So a little more than 25,000 would come off that. So the deficit would go down to 7,000. Um, and we were able to cover in, in that budget I just showed you the deficit using the re this interest reduction, which was just uh, we recalculate it and we just don't need it. So that's not a cut at all. And then um, we can cut a little bit out of the, the uh, payment. We're gonna refinance the fire and dump truck next year. So we only have to pay a certain amount. Um, it's mm -hmm. good that we do pay that amount, but we don't have to pay the whole thing, if that makes sense. There's like 20,000 in there that we could use. It's not very smart, but you could use it. Okay, and then up here you have, oh, I'm sorry. There was also a reduction in the um, dispatch assessment. So we've been working with dispatch. We have a big meeting about it tomorrow. Um, we do believe that the assessment's gonna go down to at least 122,000 next year. And we're arguing it should go down further. So the, the $7,000 gap was made up by, by those. So we would right now be able to pass a budget that is balanced. Without any other cuts? Correct. So All right, good. One thing I would say is, and this is the small cuts, this is the medium cuts, and this is the large cuts on the town side without the school. Um, we, need to be very, we need to be very deliberate in our decisions on risk. And what I mean by that is, it is likely that the school assessment's gonna go up and it is likely that our rep, it, it could happen that my revenue is projections and recommendations to you are too high. Mm -hmm. So 
we could find ourselves in a world where we have to plug another 50, 100 to $200,000 deficit somewhere. So how do you do that? You could either cut the budget now and reduce the free cash we're using in the budget to sort of stock that up. Or you could say, we're gonna authorize the expenditures and appropriations knowing that you can pull them back later and make up the gap that way. Or, you know, spend higher and use more revenue, right? There's just several different ways to, to, to do that. But it's, it's gonna be imperative for me to understand how, how much risk you wanna tolerate. And the school committee hasn't voted yet either. Chuck's very correct. So they could they could say, I don't like this idea to do a million. I want to do 800,000, right? And then we have to start looking at where we'd want to cut. Or we tell them no. <laughs> There's that too. They yes. have to come back. So that's another thing that, that I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you that, you know, this creates a pretty big bubble for FY22. Mm -hmm. So this is a, they're fully funding what we couldn't afford using one-time revenues that won't be there next year and let, you know maybe they will be i don't know if the covid will interrupt the entire school year again or parts of it which would allow for another you know non-expenditure of monies it creates a it creates a pretty interesting and not good problem in 22. if you don't cut on the expense side So you now all have a master's degree in musical finance. Huh. Well, I don't see anything to cut. That's what I think. So the decision points are, what type of budget do you recommend to a June town meeting if it happens, which is now June 23rd, by the way, we got confirmation from the moderator. So we've got a couple more weeks. Do you, do you pass a, an interim budget, an early budget, just communicate to voters that, you know, this is our best guess and we do plan to come back to you. Do you pass like the budget to end all budgets and that's all you're going to do? Um, just kind of the same thing, but a different presentation to the voters or, what do you want to do with free cash capital and some of those town meeting votes, all of that stuff? Um, and what is your policy going to be on reserves? Those are kind of the decision points that'll help me help you. Um, since the school committee didn't take a vote, can we just level fund the school budget? Yes. You, you, you deserve more than a yes. So what that would mean is we would be, eventually they're gonna pass a budget. It's likely not gonna be much less than, if anything less than what they were suggested last night. So you would go to town meeting, essentially rejecting their budget. If you level funded it. Well, we'd also arguably be rejecting it if we if we put in our 2.4 percent increase also until they change their budget yes right but that's our best guess at what their budget's going to be mm -hmm. now ryan correct me if i'm wrong though because you were saying that the state aid won't come in till or the final numbers won't be till july or later so between now and our town meeting if this if the school wants to change their projected budget they can but they've already floated these numbers and there's no, they're not going to have any new information from the state presumably to change those numbers so even if they haven't approved that what their proposed budget from what they proposed yesterday they have floated those numbers and there's not going to be any new information to alter it i mean i guess i would be fine going with that number the 2.4 percent and say, hey, that's the number you know you guys gave us when we had had to you know sort of get our budget in order. Um, and if we're planning on having another town meeting in the fall, then I guess if we, if we have to make a change, then we have to make a change. But I, I would be fine going with the two point four percent. 
but the 2.4 they didn't vote on. It's <clears throat> right, but I mean, I, I guess it's kind of, I, I would resent them even more than if they floated these numbers so that we can now start to try to react to them. And then they come back in a month or, or, or two right before our town meeting and change it up, raising our assessment when they can't argue that state aid, well, we found out more about state aid. Well, state aid isn't coming in until July. So there's no, there's no fundamental change in the information that they will be given between now and our town meeting. So then they were just deliberately lowballed themselves by floating this number of 2.4% or, you know, for our assessment increase. I would, I would, put, I would, like I said, I would, I would, I would hold them responsible for that. You see just what I'm getting to, at? Like, I guess what I'm getting, I, I, unless I'm, unless I'm misunderstanding, you know, they seem to think that this is what the chapter 70 money, the state aid is, they, they quoted those numbers and those numbers won't be finalized till after town meeting. So why shouldn't we just go with those numbers? So just to be clear, this isn't, this is what the staff recommended to them. This is like, when I recommend things to you, they still need to vote on it. So right. they could tell the administration, we're not comfortable using those state aid numbers. You need to lower those projections and, and change that budget. Sure, and, I guess, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I would say it, it's my understanding. It seems like the budget subcommittee just rubber stamps whatever was presented to them in the past when the numbers have been much higher. So I don't know why the, you know, I, I guess I wouldn't interpret the budget subcommittee or, or the school committee in general as saying, oh, no, 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 we should raise these numbers. I, I mean, I, I don't, that, that's, my, that's my suspicion. That's my thinking. Yes, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just giving you the risk. Well, the level funding that Maria is suggesting gives us the opportunity to, uh, uh, have have a second bite at the apple regardless. <clears throat> yep, I agree with that. Right? So it probably mean... puts us more squarely uh, in, the, in a corner with Hardwick. Right. So that would be this will be the ultimate test of understanding school budgeting. Right. So at a level funding, mm -hmm. right? So I, I just made twenty one equal to 20. Yep. And these are just my calculations, right? These aren't right. the final certified assessments. Our increase would still be 1.5. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the increase in our required local contribution. Maria, just, did, you mean, did you mean level, to have the school be level funded or have our assessment be level funded? The school be level funded. Okay. I don't like that they're holding that million dollars. Okay, so that equals. It's just since they're not voting on anything for us to react to, I don't know what we can do. So that's a level funding is a hundred and seventy thousand dollar increase decrease from there what they're saying they're going to do, right? Which you're right, it's not a final anything. If they had voted on something, we could have reacted to it, but they didn't vote on it. Everyone's waiting for somebody else. It's a game of chicken. Well, but that's, but like, and that's sort, of, that's sort of what I'm getting at is like, sure, they haven't finalized that number, but they also did put out a number. So if we're not supposed to react to you I mean like like it has to be worth something like you know the, the, the fact that they didn't they didn't vote on it but they've proposed this you know i guess they, they certainly could but you know even if they voted on it they could still take another vote on another you know i guess i guess i'm fine going with the number that they you know the most 
up-to-date numbers that they've proposed. It gives us a very reasonable 2.4% increase, which is still something. So it's not like we're, you know, the school, they can't get mad at us. If we, if we level fund them, they can't say, oh, well, you guys are only level funding us. You know, we're giving, we are basically signing off on the numbers that they presented at their meeting yesterday. I mean, I guess I would go with that and, and it, it might it might get higher, but at least if it gets higher, then it's getting higher from what we've already put into our budget at 2.4% as opposed to putting into our budget, it was like 1.5%. So at least it, it gives us, you know, it, it, it makes it easier to, for us to build in any necessary cuts that may need to occur if the actual final number is higher. Well, why would we continue to cut this budget and not dip into the rainy day fund? Isn't it raining? As, we, as Chuck said in our last meeting. Um, I don't understand the question, Susan. The question is rather than, rather than exacting these budget cuts, why aren't we dipping into the stables, into the rainy day fund, into the stabilization fund to, to, to balance, balance some of this? So at this point, we wouldn't be we wouldn't need to because we at, wouldn't be at right at, at, at the two point at well but w wouldn't we i thought we i thought we pushed out those um those capital expenses but that's all coming from what we would call rainy day funds anyway so it we're is, just right. we're just keeping more rainy day funds in case it really starts lightning and hailing and all the other plagues that well, we well right right but uh but uh I don't remember the list of capital projects and I don't remember the sense of urgency around any of them. Can they be pushed off till September? No, the, the dump truck. No, there's the library, on, the library foundation. Library foundation. There, are some, yeah. there are some things in there that I thought were a little more time sensitive. I will um, share that with you here. Can I ask a related question though? If we go with the 2.4%, put table all of the um, capital projects and then look to go into the fall, you know, having another town meeting as either putting the capital projects back on the budget or ultimately needing to use some of that stabilization free cash money to offset the difference in whatever the final school number comes back as. And, and that's why I'm recommending this to you because, so I'll just take you through the capital items and then. All right. Yeah. So the, the hot box, um, the, the, talking to Travis, the, the dump truck is needed more than the hot box, but you know, we need both. And then as you see. But um, do we need both right? Do we need both in June or do we, or can that wait three months? It's, it can wait three months. The problem with this dump truck and plow is the one that it's replacing is, is currently, you know, in the air fixing it. And then if we have a fall September, October town meeting, I don't know if we get one in time to make sure that our fleets. Right. Right. But that, that's not, that's not a reason to buy it now. And I think Travis would, although he wants to replace a truck and if he, if he's going to get something, it wants to be this, I, I think he understands that. Um, is that, is that truck, Will that truck be available? Yeah, we can find one. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so um, the cemetery stuff, they, they definitely need to upgrade their equipment, but um, you know, I don't know that they can't get through the summer with what they have. I, I do know that they can. They just added themselves to the capital plan this year. So that's where that's at. This uh, emergency response truck for the fire chief, this is coming from the Holden Hospital account. So if we're buying it now anyway, it's, it's not gonna come from free cash. Right. This library foundation was always built to be both an assessment and have some money in there in case that was enough to fix it. So I can tell you that we have set aside 8,000 to assess the fine foundation in FY19 that was voted. So if you took 10,000 from this, you'd have 18,000 to do a pretty comprehensive assessment. So I'm recommending you drop that from 49 to 10,000 so you can assess it, see how bad it is. And if it's really bad, then repair it in the fall. If it, if it can be pushed off, push it off. The vehicle cameras and storage is, um, it, it's not gonna make a 
huge difference liability wise to push it off to September. I wouldn't push it much farther than September, but we can definitely wait and see. This roof is like any other roof. You know, the longer you put it off, the worse it gets, but it's not, not something that has to happen in June or July. It could happen in October. And the, um, the town computers, we need, we need about 20,000 of this 30 to, to upgrade the uh, computers in our, our mobile computers in police and fire so we can avoid that Windows 7 end of life that we've been chasing for a while. And I think that's all we'll need. So uh, I am recommending that we do spend that now so we can get those computers fixed and not get in a situation where our computers don't work. Okay, good. So overall, that's 30,000 of the, if you take 42 out of this. Mm -hmm. That's where you get the 232 being returned to the coffers for, for more of a reserve. So um, why put it off? It's just a, it's just another pot of money and it gives you more flexibility. So if you, if you appropriate it and spend it now, you won't have as much flexibility if the world continues to go in a, in a bad direction. So I'm never gonna recommend using free cash, but there are scenarios that there's nothing you can do here but plug holes and hope that the economy returns. We're, we're not there yet, but we could be in the fall. So that would look like uh, 300,000 in free cash plus the stabilization fund of 400,000 to, to fight any unknowns. Plus you still haven't cut on the municipal side. So you have that kind of all lumped into one ability to, to overcome anything that comes at us. Okay. Has a committee ever approved a 2.4% guess before that wasn't actually voted on? No? I don't think so. No, and you, you don't have to vote on anything tonight. This is more of a, a you know, you looked nice. to, you looked to, um, to have information tonight from the schools. We had that meeting on Friday and then the meeting last mm -hmm. night. So this is the latest and greatest. Why would the school not vote? I'd like to answer that question. Um, like all of us, they're trying to buy as much time as possible to know, not guess. So same reason why we pushed off town meeting, even though it's two or three weeks, it gives us more time to, to build a budget that, that could be more closer to what we're actually gonna do and not just a guess. Um, at some point we are going to have to make a call, but if you can buy yourself a little time, you know, you're, you're trying to right now because the world literally changes every day. Okay. So what, what particular, tell me again, what particular guidance you're looking for, uh, looking for from us tonight? The, so the vote on the warrant, which is probably the first time numbers are going to go to the public, like mm -hmm. solid numbers, yep. is going to, is going to be March 20, or March, I wish, May 25th. Okay, so it'd be nice to have a recommendation by then. What I was saying is okay. the things you need to think about are, what do you want to do with that reserve money? What do you want to do with the school assessment? Those are the, the decision points that need to be made and articulated clearly to the to the public who's going to be pretty confused by all of this. Well, that's the other thing. Um, is is offering an interim budget less confusing or more confusing? I think. 
I'm assuming you're asking me. I, I think the I'm asking anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one twelfth budget is the most confusing thing we could do. Because it's never been done on the municipal side. It's done all the time on the school side, but on the municipal side, right? So we have a 250 that you, I think I CC'd you on this email today, Susan. You did. The 250,000 or $278,000 bill due to Worcester Regional. Mm -hmm. If you approve a 112th budget, we only have 112th of that available to spend, which means, okay. Um, you know, we're spending 250,000 more than we have to there. So where are we going to make that up? Because okay. we can only spend one twelfth of the budget every month. Right. Okay. I think the state will fix that because everyone's going to be here at some point. But right now they haven't. The law is the law. So. Okay. All right. I can't imagine explaining that to town meeting. <laughs> okay. All right. So having something to build from gives us a little bit more leeway. Okay. All right. If we can have town meeting, right? Because we don't know that yet either. Well, that's, well, that's the other thing, but I'm, um, I mean, I think, I, th I think every, I, I think everybody, well, I think people might understand the concept of the one twelfth budget given all the circumstances here, but, it, but that, but that adversely affects our cash flow position. Yes. So that's, that's the reason not, uh, that's the reason to go forward with the interim budget is what I think. It to gives me more ability to, to be flexible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it gets it gets gets you where you need to be regardless. So okay. All righty. Um, then the next question, I guess, for us is what what we think about what school assessment number to plug in. Right, Ryan. Yeah. If you wanted to do, you know, if you wanted to go say, okay, we're going to take that number that's been floated by the school, and that's going to be our number. Mm -hmm. If you want to wait two weeks to see if they send them a letter saying, you know, it'd be nice if we had a vote or come up with your own number. I mean, those are always the options. Did you stay on for the rest of the school committee um, meeting? Because I bailed as soon as the budget conversation was done. Yes, they... Um, did they decide when they were going to have another meeting they, or not? They did not. Okay. All right. All right, well, what is, then what is our sense of? Uh, oh, it's a 2.2% just to give Ryan something to work with? Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with what Josh said. I mean, if we go with the 2.4% and then it comes back and it ends up higher, at least we're already a little bit closer to yeah. that than we would be if we just went with a level fund from last year. Hey, Chuck, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> I guess if we stick to this year, I can go with the, the 2.4, but it, when I think what it's going to do for us next year, it has me concerned at the school <clears throat> committee again, they're not making, they didn't make cuts. They did, you know, they played the same right. thing last year. Right. They're going to have to start making cuts someplace. If we go with 2.4, I'm okay for now. Okay. Then 2.4, it is, I agree. So that's our sense of the meeting, uh, Ryan. Okay. I will continue to fiddle with numbers. All right, what else do you what else do you need our thoughts on? I just want to keep you in the loop on the um, the financial items that are going to be at town meeting. So the Yeah, so we'll have to we'll have to meet and go through the go through the warrant. Have you sent us the draft warrant? I can. I yeah. can. The, the biggest one for you to, to stew on is the school roof vote. Mm. Do we want to how are we fixed for how are we fixed for time? Do we want to go through that warrant now? How many warrant items are on it? There's only uh, only four you'll care about. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Want to sure. want to bang this out, you guys? We're here. Let's yeah. do it. 
Brian, if you could share your screen, we'll we'll take a look. Is is Ryan going to be able to do it? <laughs> <laughs> He's walking in his sleep. <laughs> right. I'm here for you. His computer's going to crash. Yeah. Great. All right. So this is the um, the warrant. You'll see. I'll take you at a very high level. So the stabilization fund, that's where we're at, 415. We have some capital stabilization. It's not overly useful here. And then that's our free cash total. Before yeah. you use 100 plus anything in the articles and anything you do for capital. Okay. So the first four, five articles are just placeholders. Yep. Yep. And we recommend all of those. Article six, the only decision for you here would be if you believe that the spending limit should be higher on any of these revolving or lower on these revolving accounts. And our recommendation to you is that they're fine. Were they, are they level from last year? They are, no change. Okay. All right. The seven is the budget and that's to be determined. Yeah. Eight, we are recommending that we split out the all of the school stuff. So that's the Monty Tech assessment the regional school district assessment, and then the regional school debt, which is fairly non-controversial. We have to pay the debt. But the, the reason for this is, you know, right. we, it's just time. more more clarity, you know, right. and yep. easier to fix later. Right. Would yeah. it be possible in, so Article 9 is specifically the QRSD to stipulate, it's, you know, that it's a 2.4% increase, which is what the school committee had presented on May 5th or whatever you know I mean like to make, again to make it abundantly clear that we didn't just make up this number this is the number that they floated as the, at the time that we voted on you know on, on it or whatever on to not in the warrant but in the motion for sure or okay. the, the, the discussion on town meeting right right okay because that way again people can't be like well, wait wait does this number this isn't where did this number come from you know this is the number that was proposed by them on may 5th Right. Well, we'll ex yeah, that'll get explained when they when it's uh, discussed. Right. Right. Splitting these out is just a just a way to make it more transparent. That's all we're trying to do here. Okay. Um, so then, Article Eleven is just twenty thousand for the for the cable committee. That's the number that they asked for. It's approximately fifteen hundred a month. That pays for uh, the cable operations and comes from their revolving. So it has no impact on our general fund. Okay. Six thousand from free cash for the master plan implementation. Right. Mentioned that. Yep. Seventy-five yep. for the town center. Yep. Article fourteen still lists out all the capital projects that and we just went through. And you're going to trim that back to the thirty thousand, right? Uh, I'm hearing from this committee and the board that that's where you want to go. So I will right. recraft that. Okay. Article fifteen just estimates CPA revenue. It's standard article. Article 16 is uh, the only recommendation from CPC. So this is comes from the Parks Department to replace Rainbow's End Playground. The, these, these, this playground equipment needs to be fixed and it's at the end of its life. You could fix it and that would have a certain cost. I don't want to guess, but a quarter to a third of this cost, or you could replace the whole thing and, and do what they want to do, which is make it more ADA compliant and modern. So they're recommending that we use 50,000 from the undesignated reserve and borrow 150,000 over no more than seven years to, to do this playground project. That would all be CPA fund from the surcharge. Okay. And then article 17. So this is the town, this is the center school roof. So, um, and then 18 and 19 are just changing selectmen to select board. So this is the last of them. Article 17. So, um, you know, we have new committee members and, and I haven't talked a lot about the center school roof, but you don't get accepted into the MSB program very right, and your first try unless your unless your project is bad. And we thought we would be submitting it this year to maybe get into the MSB program in a couple years. And they said, no, based off the 80 something roofs we saw, yours is one of the worst. So they accept us into the program way ahead of schedule. That's how bad the center school roof is. We paid for the feasibility study and that estimated a cost of 2.9 million plus some change. Um, benefit of the MSBA is they pay for 60% of that. So the town would be on the hook for 1.3 and that's with contingency. So hopefully it's not that high, but this article would authorize a debt exclusion override 
to pay for the borrow that it would cost to fix this roof over 10, 20, 30 years. We're not, we're not sure yet what would be the best way to go. So the, the select board discussed this. This is their, something that they've been supporting. Um, if we don't pass this, then the MSBA may not take this project up again next year or the year after. And that means we still have to replace the roof and that would be $3 million, not 1.3. That's really bad. The other thing is it's really hard to ask residents to support an override in the middle of a recession. So the, the questions have been, do we want to continue to have this override vote at the town meeting to include the annual election, which is on June 30th? Or do you want to push it to September like everything else to give it you know, more time to settle um, and, and more time to talk about it? Or do you want to do it both? Right, that's another option is if you don't pass it in, in June, then you bring it back because of the importance of the project. Um, that's a good strategic move. And it does upset some people though, when you, when you try and revote the same thing over again. So um, no small amount of decision making there for you, but I want to be as candid and open with po as possible about what, what needs to happen here. The one thing that I can tell you for sure is that roof needs to be replaced. So. All right. And no denying that and the longer we hold off, the more it's going to cost. Yep. That's right. right. Let's take a vote on the articles one through 16, because I think that they were pretty straightforward. And uh, could I have a motion to? What do you mean one through six? No, 16. Well, there... you want to take out seven, eight, nine, 10. Oh yes, ex yeah, seven, th seven through, okay. One through, one through six, we're going to exclude um, seven through 11, was that it? Seven through, eight through 11. Seven through 10. Seven through 10. And then we're back at 11? Yeah, 11 through 11 16. 11 through 16. Assuming you accept the recommendation on the capital article. Right. It's 30,000. With the, with, the, with the with the uh, adjustments we've discussed to reduce the the capital expenditure to thirty thousand, can I have a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion. A second. I'll second the motion. So these are to recommend those. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And who who? I'm sorry, I was looking down. Who? Oh, that was, was Shannon. That? Was that was Shannon? Shannon? Okay. Yeah. All right, any discussion on those on those items one through six and eleven through sixteen? Nope. Okay. All right, if we're all in favor, I vote yes. Josh? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Maria? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Okay. All right, we're going to hold off on seven through ten, and now let's now let's talk about seventeen. Did you put seventeen back up? Which one was? That's the, the roof. roof. The oh, the roof. roof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we, I think we do it twice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm leaning on. It needs to pass. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. All right. So. Um, all right, so if we can have a, a motion to, to recommend um, Article 17. I'll make a motion, Chuck. Okay. Who's I'll second? second it. Josh, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, um, we'll take a vote. Uh, Susan votes yes. Josh? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Maria? Yes. All righty. All right. Are there any other? Okay. 18. Uh, 18 and 19 are your renaming articles, right? And is that it? Yep, that's it. So it's okay, the right. selectman to select board and then it's right. I need, Yeah, you'll need us for that. I'll put no action for you unless you feel very strongly about it. I think it's mm -hmm. brilliant. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Um, 
what else would you like from us while we're here? More clarity. The, um, we're out of clarity. What else do you want? I'd like to set a, another meeting, the okay. next meeting, if we can. What will happen between now and then? Nothing. <laughs> so the selectmen will, um, and you voted on the warrant, so you don't really need to, I guess the budget would be the final thing. Right. We need to um, do that. So you could joint meet with the selectmen on the 26th. That's the day after Memorial Day holiday, so it's a Tuesday. Or, you know, meet before or after. Um, this is assuming we don't push down meeting again, right? We should know a lot more about the world on May 19th, so. That's true. Yeah, okay. Um, a joint meeting on the 26th, Work, it works for me. How about, uh, how about everybody else? Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Chuck, Chan. Plans. Yep, we're good. All yeah, set. I'm good. Okay. All right. Then let's do that. It's 7 30? 6 30. 6 30. Okay, sorry. Okay. All righty. That's it. I've I'm talked out. Okay, I bet you are. <laughs> Understandably so. Thanks for uh, thanks for accommodating all of us here. Um, all right. Any other business from anybody? Hearing none. Nope. Motion to adjourn at eight thirty-one. I'll make it. Second. I'll second it.